What up, bombers? It is Maud Garrett here, Boss Bomb for Geek Bomb. 2016 is pretty much done and dusted, completely. So I wanted to do a recap of everything that I played, watched, and read for the year 2016. Uh, I've done my top 10 for playing, and now it's time to do watching. Uh, because watching is both movies and television, I thought I'd do my top five for each of those categories. So let's start off with TV which I've been watching a lot of. Now, this isn't necessarily the shows that came out in 2016, but what I watched this year. Netflix, you've been my friend. So coming in at the number five spot. In news that surprises absolutely no one. Dun dun. That's right, Law & Order SVU, all 17 seasons of them. I started and it was on a mission to watch them all, and so I did. I watched them all. Man, you got bad towards the end, I think. The last season was your saving grace because I know that Mariska Hagate, bless you, decided to step up in a, a more of a EP role, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely producing it. But like 15, 16, even 14, not great. But it doesn't mean I didn't stop watching you. I watched the whole thing. Oh man, Elliot Stabler, I missed you in that as well. You and Olivia. <sighs> my number four spot. It's the night of. I watched the first episode on HBO and I was so anxious and felt so awful after it that I just took a big break from it. And I was like, if this is going to happen every episode, I can't do that to myself. But I binge watched the rest of it and I was so hooked. It's so well done. Riz Ahmed, um, who you know him as Bodhi from Rogue One, is so great at purveying just complete innocence and then evolving in such a way which is grating on your senses in a way if you haven't seen that one definitely give it a go some stellar acting in that one and a great concept number three spot for me this year game of thrones uh everyone knows i'm a huge fan maybe you don't but i'm a big fan of game of thrones um i've done a couple of podcasts for them if you wanted to check out i believe it's two seasons ago uh right here on the channel i did a series called the night is dark uh and full of terror with Tiffany Smith and Ken Knapsack. So you can check out those recaps if you decide to go back through that season and want to have an hour breakdown of it all. Um, this season was kind of cool because no one really knew what was happening. This was the first season that was off books. So I loved that, it kept me on my toes. I didn't see a few things coming, uh, which was good. I liked that. Hmm. My number two is a series called Black Mirror. Wow, I only discovered it like a month ago and I just binged it straight away, less than a week. Uh, and I kind of wish I spread it out a little bit, but I couldn't help it. There's not many episodes per season, which is a little unfair, but I get why. It was high production, really well made, really captivating. Big fan of it, but I watched it reverse order. I'm not sure why Netflix is doing that, but you start at season three, episode one, and then work your way back. That was odd because I finished on the, the pig fucking episode and I wish I didn't end on that. A standout episode for me was the one starring Hayley Atwell and Donald Gleeson. It was so refreshing to see Hayley in this particular role. Um, it took me kind of so long. I was like, where have I seen her? Where have I seen her? Ugh, all of Agent Carter, you idiot. Um, <laughs> that was weird for me, but I loved the chemistry and the dynamic and a lot of it kind of not only focuses on technology and where that's going but love as well and how technology can kind of have a massive impact on love <laughs> and my number one tv show that i watched this year <laughs> stranger things oh my gosh what a fantastic show i absolutely loved it uh, it was just the right amount of horror the acting was impeccable um except winona Ryder. i'll fight you about that i didn't think she was great <laughs> i get it her son's missing no one really believed her but still i was tiring seeing her try and smoke like this um i just think this is exactly what television needed and i i love the risks that services like Netflix and Hulu are taking because it means that you can get high caliber actors. It means that you can have just only 12 episodes and call it a day um, and it leaves us wanting more. And I love that. So that's it for TV. Next is movies. Number five, a recent-ish movie that I saw on the rooftop of Melbourne's uh, cinema. There's a rooftop cinema there, so I saw that. It was so cold though that I had two blankets and was still freezing, so that kind of distracted from what I was watching. But it was Arrival. Amy Adams is just everywhere at the moment. Um, and Jeremy Renner's in this one, who plays a character that I haven't really seen before, and he was so much more likable than what I'm used to. So 
That was cool. I really dug the, the way that they tackled this kind of sci-fi. Usually with alien movies, it's like, uh, invasion, we've got to kill them all. But this one was all about communication. And it was done in such a clever way. Um, and the whole movie was, it just kind of had you thinking and second guessing and just wondering, which was so cool. And that continued after the movie as well. Number four for me was Civil War. I think it definitely helped that I watched this one at the world premiere at the Dolby Theatre and we we're on the mezzanine level and I was next to Sam and we're huge comic book fanatics that just like that whole experience was so fantastic. Like the whole cinema was erupting in some key scenes and dialogue and I think that really added to watching it. But I, I loved this movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought I think that Marvel had really kind of have nailed it down with pacing and great choreography and their action sequences and telling a story. Yeah, big fan of Civil War. I left feeling really great about it. Number three for me was Deadpool. I love this movie. Um, I, I just think that it's so funny and it's just so risque and it's so cheeky. So cheeky. I mean, you do see a lot of cheeks in it too. Thank you, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, but I watched it again recently on the plane and I was just cracking up laughing. Like this is very, very funny. Big fan, big fan. Can't wait to see what happens with Deadpool 2. Number two for me, maybe a bit of a surprise, but it's La La Land. Uh, I saw it semi-recently um, so I could interview Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone about it. And it's, I think it's different for me because I moved from Australia to LA to make it here. And that's what they tackled in the movie a lot. Um, the brutal side of LA as well as the lovely scenic sides of LA and I don't know it was very very personal for me because I'm immersed in it that and I've been in love with Ryan Gosling since I was 14 so I mean that didn't hurt he's so oh god he's so cute he used to be in a show called Young Hercules I used to watch it when I was 14 and I was like that guy is yummy and then I saw him again in like remember the Titans and I was like it's you and now look Probably why I broke out into song when I interviewed him. A two, a one, I'm interviewing Ryan Gosling. He is in front of me. We're clicking our fingers and chatting happily. Idiot. Idiot. And my number one movie of the year has one in it. Rogue One. What an amazing movie. I just thought it was such a tragic tale of what would really go down in a galactic war. It's not all love and one-liners from scruffy looking nerf herders. It's some serious shit. And they tackled that really well in this movie. I cried a lot, very emotional. I'm not sure that I would want to keep coming back to this movie. Like I've seen it twice now and I actually enjoyed it just as much the second time as I did the first time. But knowing how it ends, it's just a sad tale. It's like a Shakespearean tragedy. I said in my review, definitely check it out. It's on the channel. Um, yeah, see why it's my number one movie of the year. Anyway, that's it for me. Five shows, five movies in that order. Do you agree, disagree? Anything that I may have missed? Anything that you loved? Let me know because Geek Bomb is all about sharing your inner geek and finding out what you love and letting other people know about it and, and just talking about things that make us geek out. Thank you so much for joining me. 2016 has been such a big year. Unfortunately, guys, I didn't win. Someone else did. It has been a big, big, big year. Geek Bomb's changed so much. If you're new or if you've been there from day one, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're always amazing when you want to share things with us because Geek Bomb is a place to just let your geek flag fly. And if you've been doing that with us, ah, oh, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's been amazing. I'm looking forward to 2017 too, though. Should be good. But that's watching. Next, we'll be reading. Take care. Bye.